Hi guys, Lightroom Mark here. Hope I find you well. Now, as the time of this video, I'm unable to find a plugin for Lightroom Classic that allows you to edit your images, preserving your workflow in an Infinity Photo. So I'm here today to show you, or hopefully point you in the right direction, of setting up your own external editor to preserve your workflow. So here's an image, one of my training images, and I want to create an effect in Affinity Photo. Now this process is exactly the same for other creating um, external editors, links between classic. So this will apply to other um, software if you wish, if there isn't a plugin already. Okay, so this is the image that I want to take into Affinity Photo and then bring back into Lightroom. So what we first need to do is go up to our preferences on a Mac, that's Lightroom Classic Preferences, and it brings up our preferences, and this is General, Presets, and the third tab is External Editor. And then down the bottom is our External Editor. Top part of it is the default External Editor, which is Photoshop, and the bottom one is our additional external editor. Okay, so what we need to do is set, set this up. So I use file format for PSD, so I'm preserving a standard format across the Adobe Suite or other external applications. Color space Pro Photo RGB, that is um, the color space that Lightroom uses and what you should be using in all your uh, external editors from Photoshop to On1 to Nixoff if you're using color effects and things like that because then the colors are producing, being represented or reproduced the same in every application. 16-bit and 300 dots per inch resolution, that resolution is print standard. An important tick box is stack with original because when you use an external editor, Lightroom is going to generate a new file. So it's not a virtual copy. It doesn't use the original, generates a new file and it stacks that image, that new file next to your original image. Now the bottom drop down is so that you can rename or well, what is the name of this um, new file that it's going to create. Now what I use is the original name and I have an underscore, the letter E usually, and then a sequencing number. And E stands for edited and it then just increases one, two, three, four. So it's a, it's a number count. So I think I'm in my commercial catalog, I'm about 10,400. Um, so I know it's my 10,400 external edit, whatever that is, in Lightroom Classic. So. I then have to choose the application. So I hit choose here, go off Infinity Photo. This is in my finder and applications. Um, hopefully it will be as easy as that to find it on your uh, system, but go off to your programs files or your application file, find the application, whatever it is, and hit choose. And then we need to save that preset. So we click on the preset and we go save as new preset and I'm going to call that Affinity Photo and press Create. And that's it. I've now created that action within Lightroom Classic. So when I press on my keyboard, Alt Option, so Alt some keyboards, Command E, it'll come up with a pop up Edit Photo in Affinity Photo. And with my Lightroom adjustments, normally because you're going to do some corrections, white point, black point, general exposure, maybe some local adjustments. And then we go edit. It takes this image. It creates a new one. It takes it. And I'm now in Affinity Photo. So there is one important tip box that we need to have ticked in Affinity Photo. And I'll show you what that is before we do something to this image. So if we go up to Affinity Photo at the top and we come down to Preferences, this is the Preference menu, click on General. And down the bottom here it says Enable Save Over Imported PSD Files. And we make sure we tick that. 
and press close. And the reason why is it's going it's going to save this file on top of or over. So you're going to destruct the original PSD file where it was saved. And we've told Lightroom to create that this original PSD file next to the original raw file or JPEG or whatever format it is. The reason why we do that is if you don't have that tick box, Affinity will just save it where the default is to be saved. So for example, in my pictures, my photos, um, it'll just save it there. And we want to preserve the workflow from Lightroom. So now I'm just going to create a quick uh, distortion. So distortion and 12, and there we go. Press apply. I've created this visual distortion. I'm now just going to file save and it's now saved the file. So now I'm just going to jump back quickly to Lightroom Classic and there you go. There is the file. And just to show you, if I press G for grid, there's the original. There is the PSD edited and you can see from the file names. So that is how we create that normal external editor and I can go right click editing affinity and here's my other ones now if you want to change back your keyboard shortcut to perhaps your preferred external additional external editor you just go back up to Lightroom classic preferences and then from your drop down you just change so I'll change that back to on one effects and the keyboard shortcut will now will open that in on one effects. But if I want to open it again in affinity, I go right click edit in and there's affinity. So that's how you can build yourself an external editor for affinity photo or any other third party application that you want to open an image in Lightroom classic. Now, I hope you found that of some use, some help. If you've got any questions, please leave comments below. I normally do a video by reply. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Or come and join me, lightroommark.com. Lots of videos up there and my live events. Or Lightroom Monday, where on Monday evenings, UK time, I host a live support group where each week we look at a particular workflow, task, panel, module, and we go through these actions and supporting us Lightroom users and Lightroom Classic. After that 30, 40 minutes, we have a half hour session of random Q and A. So if you've got a question that you want to ask, then you can just jump in and say, look, I've got a problem with this. How do I do that? And, and that's what the support group's all for, is supporting each other in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So I hope you enjoyed your video today. And uh, any questions, just leave a comment. Take care. All the best. Bye for now.